everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Jenny I'm here today to share my third episode of talking through my shelves where I go through the books that I have on my shelves and talk you through them basically as it says in the on the tin so uh, in honor of Aussie April if you have not heard of Aussie April it is an initiative that Jacqueline from Six and Is For Me and Doris from Aldi Books um, began a couple years ago and they're not officially running it this year but it's something that I'm just kind of and it kept me inspired and kept Australian literature on my radar so I do consider April to be the month where I prioritize Australian literature even though I can read it all year round so I wanted to go through the books that I have on my shelves that are by Australian authors. The first one is The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. This novel was one of the most popular books of 1977. And uh, I read it um, after reading a uh, article talking about the most pop the, have you read the most popular book from the year you were born and so um, I read this book in honor of that list and I really enjoyed this I thought it was um, you know a sweeping family saga set in the Australian outback um, you follow uh, an amazing family that um, go through a lot of ups and downs and you just follow their journey um, living in the outback and um, yeah it, it really it really is sweeping it has a lot of complexity um, I really enjoyed it and um, I'm keeping it for sentimental reasons I don't know if I'll ever reread it I actually would really like to watch the miniseries the TV miniseries which I remember from when I was young as well um, so I probably will watch that at some point um, but I am keeping it kind of for sentimental reasons next one is the spare room by Helen Garner Helen Garner is um, you know one of the most popular um, Australian authors that I have heard about over the years on booktube and this is a really amazing novel about female friendship about um, women who are older and who are experiencing a different period of life so a period where their their children have moved out or they're older and they never had children and um, you follow two friends as one friend goes to live with the other when she's battling a disease and when she's facing death and so it's a really emotional hard-hitting novel but it's so poignantly written and it just really touches your heartstrings and um, Helen Gardner is very very talented so um, you can tell that by this book and I would like to read more of Helen Gardner's work I just haven't got to any yet but I will in the future Next is an Indigenous author from Australia, Larissa Berndt, and this is Finding Eliza, Power, and Colonial Storytelling. I read this, I believe, last year for Aussie April. Um, so this is a um, an analysis of different um, perspectives of how Australia's literature, but also just the colonial lens was used to create the stories and the myths and the stereotypes and the prejudices that exist in white supremacist society today. So it analyzes a lot of things like Robinson Crusoe, um, ideas of cannibalism and why they were promoted f uh, towards indigenous peoples, um, the kind of uh, poor white woman narrative, the, the narrative of, of the threat of uh, other um, so all of that is explored really intelligently in here by Larissa Barrett so I do recommend this one this is nonfiction obviously the last painting of Sarah DeVos by Dominic Smith so when I started this when I read I actually listened to this on audio and um, I did not know that Dominic Smith was Australian I don't think when I um, when I started reading this this is a uh, three part three way timeline three perspective uh, uh, 
narrative and um to they all intertwine in this very magical way i loved this novel um it is to me the essence of good writing good characters and um exploring art in this very like just so well written just so well written this is one of my favorites i actually found this this um soft cover in a little free library so it's it's kind of beat up but I thought oh I've you know I definitely want to have a copy of this I definitely want to reread it someday so I thought I would just get this one until I found a better version of it um, and reading it in and not listening to it will be will be really interesting so I don't want to even tell you too much about the plot of this but basically it's this one little painting by this um, painter Sarah DeVos that has been passed down. You follow the lineage of the painting, you follow a forgery of the painting, you follow um, the forger, you follow the person trying to figure out the mystery. There's just It's just brilliantly written. I really love it and I, I do plan to read more of Dominic Smith. Um, he has an, I think at least one novel that has come out since this one which I have on my library TBR so very excited to read more of his work and I highly recommend this one it's one of my favorite books about art one of my favorite novels that has art as a subject and I think it's done perfectly this one I just read so um, you will be able to hear my thoughts on this in my April wrap-up. Um, this was a pretty popular um, novel. It was a New York Times bestseller when it came out, The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. Um, and there was a film made of it. So it was like one of those, um, you know, bestseller sweeping, sweeping everyone off their feet type of stories. Uh, I have kind of mixed feelings about uh, this novel. Um, to me, there were some holes in the plot that I felt really removed me from what could have been my complete enjoyment of the story. Um, and, you know, I think that I, I feel very complicated, very complex feelings about novels that become as big as this one did. Um, I think though that the setting of Western Australia coast was brilliantly um, brought to life. So the setting itself is almost worth reading this book for. Just getting a sense of what 1920s Western Australia was like. I think small town, you just get this really good um, sense of that, of that development of that area. So for that, um, I would say it it's worth a read, but it's not a book that I will be rereading, and I'm not sure if I'm going to watch the movie or not. Uh, so I will probably be passing this one on. So this one will be heading off my shelf um, in the coming months or weeks. This is The Erratics by Vicki Laveau Harvey. Um, and this one won the Finch Memoir Prize. It was long listed for the Stella and I think it actually won the Stella. This is, the Stella is the um, Australian um, one of an Australian book prize that's very popular and I think it won. So um, I picked this up just for that. It's also um, interesting to me because it's got an, a Canadian connection. So while Vicki Laveau Harvey is Australian or she lives in Australia now um, she she was born in Canada but lived many years in France before settling in Australia so now she lives in Australia so she's you know Canadian Australian hybrid author um, and um, it's this is actually a, a memoir so um, it's about her kind of going home to Alberta and dealing with her parents and and their relationship and their health issues and things like that so yeah I'm I'm very curious and and so I will read this uh, eventually okay now we get to um, one of the well probably my favorite Australian novel I've ever read which is flames by Robbie Arnott um, 
This story is an adventure like you have never read before. Um, I think I still see it as kind of this nature superhero hybrid story. And I don't know if that really explains it enough for you, but there's just this supernatural element to his writing. There's also this very grounded um, earth uh, spirituality that comes through his writing. Um, and he, the descriptions of Tasmania, I believe this is set, um, in Tasmania in Australia. Um, it, it's just, I, I can't even really explain to you what this is, but it is such a fantastical wrap you up. You can't stop thinking about it. I still think about it. I think it's been two years since I've read this book. I still think about it. I can still viscerally bring up imagery from this story. There's some imagery in this story that will stay with me for my whole life. Like it's just the way he evokes imagery is, I can't really compare it to another author actually. So loved this and would highly recommend, you know, I can't recommend enough actually. <laughs> read it. Um, and along those lines, I have his second novel, which is The Rain Heron. So I plan to read this uh, in May because of my spring TBR. So I will give more details about why this fits in with my spring TBR plans um, in, in May. But um, this one is... Um, about someone living in a in a kind of like living alone with nature um, and then she is um, she encounters some sort of a group of people who come into her kind of like private um, area where she's living and she has to deal with with these people and kind of go from there. And I'm sure it's gonna be absolutely fantastic and full of amazing nature evocative imagery. So I'm really excited to read this. And then my last one for my Australian books is The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. And Evie Wilde is, I believe, half British, half Australian. So she's kind of a hybrid author. Um, this book, also won the Stella, I believe. I think it won it very recent, like maybe maybe in 2020 or 2021. I can't remember. Um, I have not read any Evie Wilde, but I do, I have heard a lot about her on other booktubers channels. This one was very appealing to me because it has, I think, I think it might have three timelines as well. Um, yeah, three women, different centuries, weaving together their stories. I am always, like, I really dig, do, like, multiple timelines. They usually um, are very good. They usually work for me. Um, so I'm very excited to read this. And I've had it for a while, and I really need to get to it soon. So this one, I would assume I'm going to read this year. So these two are going to be read this year for sure. Um, and this one, it might be, but I do have my five star predictions memoirs. So I'm focusing on those memoirs first. And then if I get through those ones, I might throw this in near the end of the year. So that is my, uh, talking through my shelves, episode three, Australian authors. I hope that, um, you are out there seeking authors from different countries. I think, um, you know, there's nothing that you can lose from trying to diversify the countries from which you read. And even though, you know, if you're coming from another a North American country, I think um, Australia really, and the UK and, uh, you know, a lot of Western countries have that kind of parallel in their cultures, but there's just enough difference to make um, some interesting contrasts as well. So um, I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.